All right, all right. Happy Monday morning, people. We're uh, just getting on the road here. We left out last night uh, or yesterday afternoon. Got to get down here to uh, Orlando, trying to get delivered first thing this morning. Um, we got a load of Chrysler units that are on their way to the auction. Picked these up in Michigan. Great paying load. And uh, taking them down here to Orlando. That's like, if I want to say, it's like 900 and some miles. Load pays like 6100 or 6300 bucks. Coming down, which is cool because my load going up paid uh, a bit over $2,800 to go pick that load up. And the back haul works out nicely. So we're going to start this week with a pretty good load on the ground and actually start the month out pretty strong. Today is August 1st. But what I wanted to talk about today is I keep getting questions um, from people. And I got one just the other day that I want to uh, answer whether it is better to get into uh, like a three car wedge trailer, whether it's better to get into like a seven, eight car high mount, or whether it's better to just jump straight into a stinger. And uh, you can take this information if you're planning on um, moving up, if you already have three car wedges and you're thinking about going bigger, or uh, if, you got, if you're bigger and thinking about downsizing, I guess. Um, you can use this information to kind of judge what your plan is, your plan of attack, I guess. So, to start off, we're going to go with the three-car wedge. Obviously, you guys know um, most of this is behind a pickup truck. I do not recommend anybody do the uh, idea of... Because it's a three-car wedge and you register it below a certain weight that you can get by with uh, the hot shot style of not needing a CDL. Don't do that. Just go get the CDL. Do it the right way. Um, I'm not going to get into whether that's illegal or legal because that's mostly my opinion on the matter. Um, so just keep that in mind when, uh, when you are thinking about buying one of these. If you don't have a CDL, just go get one. Take that little bit of time, uh, go to class, get the CDL, whether it's uh, a CDL school or whatnot. Um, I know there's some like where I live in Tennessee that you can now even get college loans for in order to uh, get your CDL. So go give that a whirl. Um, on top of that, Three car wedges, they have their place. Um, you can make a lot of money with a three car wedge, but you kind of have to know uh, the 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 area of the market that you're planning on running. Um, I would say don't don't really look at going long haul with a three car wedge. And when I say long haul, I'm saying anything over 250 miles away from your home terminal. Personally, a three-car wedge, in my opinion, is absolutely perfect for um, using my state as an example, loading out of the Nashville rail yard, delivering around Nashville. Um, get in and out of these dealerships quickly. You can load three trucks on them uh, if you have the right size vehicle in front of it. Uh, you can load cars, pretty much whatever. You can load three on get down the road, get delivered, get back, keep going load after load after load. And you can do multiple, I would say, company, uh, what they're going to pay a company. Um, I would say you could do multiple 150 to $250 loads in a single day. When I say multiple, I'm talking, you should be trying to do six to eight. You should be knocking them out. And uh, you'll, you'll make money with it. Um Long haul stuff, I would stay away from simply because there's too many miles and you don't have enough cars to make up for the cost. In my opinion, once you start getting into needing to buy new equipment, the repairs, and that sort of thing. Um, then we're going to get on to the, uh, 
six, seven, eight car high mount trailers behind a semi. I ran one for many years. Loved it. Ran uh, Wallumo seven and eight car trailers. Great equipment. Um, I ran them. Well, my dad ran it behind his uh, Kenworth that he had. He had a uh, T660. And uh, when he was running with me, he ran that. Now, that trailer is very good for what we did. We did, uh, his main thing was picking up uh, repo units out of uh, East Tennessee, running them up to the auction, and then we'd run in to uh, deliver them there. And if uh, it was part of the week where we didn't have any work coming back out of the auction for our own dealers, well, then we would run or his trailer would run over to the rail yard or Nissan, load up and come back. Those trailers are great. Yes, you can run them cross country, especially if you're hauling heavier stuff like Tesla's um, because you really don't need a stinger for Tesla's. But I will say the loads going out, you are going to lose a little bit. Um, a, I, I highly recommend if you're buying a high mount, only go with the eight car equipment. You can always load six, you can always load seven, but the nice thing is with the eight car trailers, you can almost always load eight, and that extra car really starts to pay off. You got to think, you're doing a uh, a seven, eight hundred mile run, and you're picking up a car that's paying three hundred and fifty or four hundred and fifty bucks going up there or down there or across wherever you're going. That extra car is pretty much going to cover, I would say, almost 50%, 80% of the fuel at these prices right now. Um, I haven't really paid attention to wh how much the fuel costs per mile lately. I don't, uh, I don't own my own trucks anymore. Obviously, you guys know I work for United Road. But that is definitely something to uh, take into account, that just that one car... That's covering a lot of expense where the other cars are now more profit. So if you're hauling a six-car trailer and you can get two extra cars on, that's $900 at $450 a pop for those vehicles. Um, it adds up quick. We used to run a high-mount trailer when I first started. It was a seven-car. It was actually a 1977 Delavan. This is back in, like, 2010 uh, when I first started. It was my first big trailer that I ever bought. Um, that thing, we used to run down to Florida hauling snowbirds. I'd load seven snowbirds on that thing and take them down there between eight and $900 a piece going down to Florida. And you could make money with it. Then when you get down there, you turn around and when we're hauling snowbirds down, you're grabbing loads from down in that area, trying to get half to three quarters of the way back up and then deadhead the rest of the way home. If, uh, if you're running out of time, which we usually were on our 70-hour uh, work week. Okay, so let, let's just go with uh, seven cars, 800 bucks going south. Um, that's like $5,600 one way. Uh, turn around, load another $2,400 rolling north out of like Jacksonville, out of Brunswick, even out of the uh, rail yards. I mean, rail yards. Even out of the uh, uh, auction there in Orlando, and and run loads back north, you could uh, you could make pretty good money with a seven car trailer, and I, and I did it. And I'll tell you what, that was fun because it taught you how to load real quick. That's a uh, those trailers back then were only 96 inches wide, so putting Jeep Grand Cherokees down in the belly of a 96 inch wide trailer, it's tight, it's real tight. Um, and then lastly. We're going to go with the Stinger, uh, the big boy, the big dog of the car hauling industry, the uh, numero uno, in my opinion. Um, these can be tricky in the aspect of loading them and deciding which type you need. Um, but let's go with, uh, let's just go with high rails and uh, quick loaders. They both have their pros and cons. A uh, quick loader is going to be lighter than a high rail, but the uh, high rail, you're going to be able to load 10 on a sleeper truck. So you got to kind of decide what you need out of the truck itself. Um, 
for me, I would probably go with the uh, high rail if I was loading uh, a lot of uh, new cars and doing kind of the work that I do now, taking stuff longer distances, that, that regional, that 500 to 750 or plus mile run. Um I would go with the high rail simply because I could load 10 down in the belly. Unless you're loading a lot of like pickup trucks and bigger Chrysler style vehicles, then I would probably just go ahead and settle for a uh, 80 foot quick loader. Not not that 75, but definitely the 80 foot quick loaders. Um, simply because of the speed of loading them. And if you're loading a lot of trucks, you're not going to be able to load 10 cars anyway. So you might as well uh, have your speed up. The nice thing with... Though these uh, uh, stingers, the nine car, ten car stingers, is your ability to always be maxed out. Um, you can always, almost always load nine, um, and and you're 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 gonna make money with. It. They are also the most expensive to get into, but if it was me, um, I I would buy. I would have started. Knowing what I know now, looking back, I started with a three-car wedge and worked my way up through lots of different trailers and trucks. Um, I, I would have just started right with the Stinger and learned it, uh, especially a nice quick loader. Hell, you could load four or five units on that thing and run local shit if you really needed to. Um, but yeah, if it was up to me, the, the Stinger is the only uh, – there's diesel fuel in that island. Uh, the Stinger is the only truck that I would personally buy and run. Um, just simply because when when wherever you're going, a lot of these loads um, through brokers, a lot of them are booked as Stinger style loads. So they, I, I used to have trouble with my dad's trailer from time to time getting them to break them up because they're like, look, I bid this as a nine car load. I'm going to be leaving one car behind. How am I going to get this hauled kind of thing? And there were times where that, that would catch me. So I personally, I like the stingers. I like just being able to load up and a lot of your loads on a stinger are going to be $2,500 to $3,000 loads. Most of the time, um, and, and you're, you're talking three, four loads on the week. You have covered all your expenses. I got to get fuel, so I will see you in a minute. All right. So I got me some uh, fuel and food, and we are rolling again, heading uh, the rest of the way into Okoe. We got another 182 miles to go. But I want to talk about the whole Stinger thing again, or still. I want to talk finish what I was talking about with the stinger um the other nice thing with running stingers are the aspect of they're more versatile than uh than, than running like a high mount or even a three car wedge being that you have the ability most vehicles will fit in by the way this is one of my uh favorite uh little bridges here in the United States. I love crossing into Florida here on 95. Don't know why, I just always have. But um, the you you have if you have like a pickup truck on a load, you have most uh, stingers, you're gonna have two to three different spots you can put it based on where your load's going and what you're loading. And when I say that, I mean, like, if you're doing multiple drops, then you don't have to, uh, you, you, you can put, you might be able to put the truck in a spot that's feasible for where you're dropping. Um, and, and you, you can have it so that you don't have to unload and reload the vehicle multiple times. Now I say that and. It doesn't matter whether it's a three-car wedge, eight, seven, eight-car high mount, or a nine, ten-car stinger. 
Uh, most of these trailers, if you have a dually, you're going to have one spot to put them on, which is going to be the top bag. That's just something you're going to have to understand, that loading big uh, duallys and, and larger vehicles like that, even probably some of the Raptors and these new TRXs, I, I don't know if you can load them in between the rails on a high rail. I seriously doubt it. <clears throat> so even those are going to be at the back, uh, back top. But those are those are vehicles that I try not to haul ever or all that often. Um, I just don't like to. Never have. I don't like uh, hauling a lot of big trucks. It does a lot of wear and tear and will destroy your equipment real quick over loading like the Kia loads that I normally run. Um, and, and lastly, you, with a Stinger, it, it's the being able to put all the vehicles on. The, the way the loads are built, um, you're maximizing the amount of money you're bringing in based on the amount of time you're working. And, and, and when I say that, I mean, you turn around and let's say each vehicle's $300. So on a three-car wedge going 500 miles, you're making $900. On a seven-car trailer, you're making $2,100. On a nine-car trailer, you're making uh, $2,700 on that same run. So that same 500 miles is going to be, if, if everything is equal, you're going to burn on a 500-mile run, I'm going to say around, let's just make it easy, dollar per mile, you're going to burn $500 in fuel. Now you go, let's go say a, uh, the, the seven car trailer, seven, eight car trailer, your burn rate is going to be a little bit less. So instead of $500, you're going to burn, let's say $450. And, and with the three car wedge, it's going to be the lowest. But even still, you're going to be burning the better part of probably $350 on that run I, I could be over estimating but for the difference of roughly 150 200 dollars between the three car wedge and the stinger the three car wedge you're making 900 dollars the stinger you're making triple that so that's kind of my theory on why you, you want to run a a stinger over a three car wedge in most circumstances now Running short little local stuff? No, I, I don't think the Stinger is going to be your best bet. Um, and when I say short local, I'm talking anything under like 100 miles. 50 to 100 miles, the whole loading up in Nashville, delivering in Nashville, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would I would be very skeptical about, uh, about running that. Alright guys, what's going on? We just got here to uh, this GMC dealer in, uh, where are we, Montgomery, Alabama here. Just got this load on last night. It's all Buick, I think they're Enclaves? I don't haul enough Buicks to know. Envisions. So I loaded these up in uh, over there at the Port of Brunswick. Brought these up here, nice little 300 mile run. It was like 314 miles or something like that for 1600 bucks so not that bad of a run we are going to uh get these things offloaded so i'm gonna set you guys up so you guys can watch we're gonna get offloaded here so let's get going before check out this car nice little mustang surprised it didn't hit a wall um let's uh let's get these things offloaded quick Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you could get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best So treat the worst of times just like a test 
If only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can help you feel alive Find a passion, take some action, and with a little time Just be patient, make a statement, try to enjoy your life They'll try to kick you while you're down they want to rise up while you drown They want to fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless I can see that they compare I think everyone's against me Maybe something in the air Am I paranoid? I swear a void is forming And they're scared I walk a straight path Not many can say that I like to play fast Cross me and there's payback Alright guys, so we're just continuing our week uh, We had that run down to Florida Had the run out of Brunswick That we that you just saw a minute ago um, Did that one yesterday Over to Montgomery now we have this quick little 200 mile run going up to uh, coming here to uh, Roswell, Georgia, out of Montgomery. It's a Hyundai load, pays a thousand bucks. Quick little 200 mile run, and then we are going back down to West Point to go load up. And I will give this dealership. The dealership itself is like across the street, a real small lot over there. Normally, a lot of these places will make you park right in the street and try to not get hit by cars. I give this one a lot of credit, this Hyundai dealership here in Roswell, Georgia, that they have this off-site yard that we can load out of and be nice and safe. So I don't know Hyundais all that well because I don't haul them all that often, but okay. I got three Santa Fe's right here. These are all three of my big uh, SUVs that I was hauling, and the rest are just all, I got six Tucson's back there. I was going to put one of the Tucson's right here just because it makes this getting down to height just a hair easier. Obviously, we're down to height nice and easy. This is nothing large, but you can see it had the roof rack on it, so I wasn't going to stick it under here. But this is what we have dropped. We're going to go run, grab another load up into Huntsville, and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, get a load out of Smyrna, Nissan's uh, heading back home for the weekend. So let's get this thing off and keep going. See you guys in a minute. All right, guys, we are just getting up here for our second load on the day. I got to get over three lanes before the top of that hill up there. So we are going to work our way across. This is Huntsville, Alabama, uh, Kia dealer that we are going to uh, this dealership here you will see is one of the fun ones that I actually have to back into um, in order to get in there. You can pull in, but the problem is there is no place possible to turn around and you're not allowed to park on the street because, as you can tell, this is a very, very busy road. Uh, so I have found it easiest is going to be to... Uh, Swing way out to the left, swing back in towards the dealership, um, and and just block traffic to back in. Um, I just it, it's safer that way. If I were to have to back out of this dealership, the dealer, um, if I were to have to back out of this dealership, the first time I ever came here, they refused to back you out. I pulled in, not knowing any better. I'm fairly certain this is the very first load I've ever I ever hauled for United Road came here. Uh, I didn't do it then because both me and my dad ran a pair of loads up here together. So he backed me out and then I uh, backed him out. It worked out fine. But 
if I were to have to do it today, not having anybody here to spot me, I would have to uh, shut the road down. I not shut the road down. I would have to actually call the police and have them come on out and stop traffic so I can back out. And the reason I say that is I know I, I'm going to get some hate about doing that per se. But the reason is, is I'm not willing to risk my license backing out blind and hitting and killing somebody. So my license, my freedom, if uh, they don't like me uh, doing it, I'm, I'm sorry, then I just will never deliver here again. Uh, I have had to do that at two separate dealerships over the years. Um, actually, and I'm pretty sure both of them were here in uh, Alabama. So as I start to back in here, I'm going to get quiet, but you guys will be able to see what it's like here. We got a little bit of space in the road. I got everything that I can flash is flashing, and we are going to pull out to the middle lane. Angle the back end of our trailer towards the entrance. And now the road is shut down. And the truck does not want to go into gear. There we go. Now we went into gear. And we are backing in to the dealership. That was really weird. I don't know why the truck acted like that. But here we go. Back in nice and safely. And it is fairly uh, straight shot once we back in, but I angle off to the side and uh, it. I try to re-angle so I'm not shutting their entire parking lot down because it does get tight for anybody to try to get out of this parking lot and as you can see, I got trees on the side of me. Gotta watch them while I'm backing up as well so that way we don't hit those scratch any cars aka always deliver with zero damages that is the name of this game um i'm backing in right right past this uh, light pole here on my right which i'm sure you guys won't be able to see but i get right past this tree and this light pole and straighten back out so now People have room to get around me, and I can offload safely. So I'll show you guys what this load looks like. See you guys out there in a second. All right, so this is what I mean by you have to back in. It's real tight dealership, but got a nice uh, nine-car load coming straight to here. This is uh, pays me just under, or pays the truck just under nine hundred dollars. It's a hundred and change, but. A nice, quick, easy load. Get up here, get these things dropped, and head on up to uh, Smyrna to grab our next load. So let's get loaded, unloaded. All right, so guys, obviously we just finished up our week. Um, what we had going on this week is we did start out loaded um, from last week, which was a load coming out of the marshalling yard in, uh, in Michigan. That was going down to Orlando, Florida, down to Ocoee. That was a load of Chryslers. That load right there was kind of the kicker for the whole week. Got us going real well. It was a $6,370 load. Um, we couldn't get it on last week because of the fact that uh, just didn't have time. Had to go home for the weekend. So uh, we, we sat that at home and left out uh, early or mid-afternoon on Sunday. Ran down to Brunswick, got a uh, hotel down there, finished the drive into uh, Orlando on Monday morning, delivered, got back up to Brunswick, got reloaded with a load to Montgomery, which was a load for $1,543. That was a uh, load of Buick Envoys, which you saw us unloading a few minutes, uh, not Envoys, Envisions, uh, which you saw us unloading earlier in the vlog. Then, after that, we ran over to Hyundai in Montgomery, which is like six miles away, so no deadhead, for a load over to Roswell, Georgia, to the north side of Atlanta. That was a $927 load of Hyundais. Again, a little bit cheaper, local kind of style freight, but you can make money with it. 
After that, we left Roswell, uh, north side of Atlanta there for the hour and a half. It was like 82 miles or something like that. Back down to West Point, Georgia for a load to Huntsville, Alabama. That was a uh, another one dropper for $886. And then uh, today we just finished our week. Um, this is Thursday because my daughter's first day of school is tomorrow. So I'm going to be home for that. She is going into kindergarten, and I want to take her to school. And uh, that one, we ran up to Smyrna, which uh, from Huntsville north, I think was literally 126 miles, so right at two hours. Straight up 65 there. Um, grabbed that one. That was a, a two-dropper of Nissan's. One went to uh, Harper Infinity. The other one went to Ted Russell Nissan for $1,094. Bringing our weekly total to ten thousand eight hundred and twenty dollars. So last week, I forget the number um, that it ended up being. That was in the last vlog, uh, ten, eleven thousand, something like that. This week, did another uh, uh, mid ten thousand. What was that? Ten thousand, ten thousand eight hundred and twenty. So just just shy of eleven again. Had two back to back great weeks. Uh, pretty much knocked out 22 grand in the last two weeks. So that is a very, very, very good start. Um, one was finishing off last month. One was starting this month, but uh, either way, uh, guys, we are on our way to our goal. My goal really isn't uh, $10,000 a week to the truck. Um, it, it's nice and I'll take it every time it's offered. But uh, really, my goal tends to be right there at about 8000 is what I'm shooting for. Um, it keeps me at my Monday through Friday, gets me my bonuses, and it, uh, it pays all my bills. Also, guys, I am going to put it on here in case any of you guys are even looking for something like this. But I do have my bus, um, my personal bus that we used for uh, traveling over the last year. Um, it's an MCI, uh, MC9 bus uh, that was converted back in the 80s. Beautiful, beautiful coach. Um, we, we got four kids, so we're looking for a toy house. I mean, a, uh, a bunkhouse that we're just a travel trailer bunkhouse is what we're going to convert to. Going to miss the thing, but anybody that wants it, um, I'm going to put some photos up here right now. As you can tell, it is a beautiful bus in my opinion i do like the older styling but it is going to be for sale oh well, it is for sale right now so shoot me an email if you are interested um we're asking 44.5 for it it yeah you offer me anything 42 plus the thing will be gone um but yeah guys we're trying to uh Trying to get that thing on the road so we can get something for our kids to be able to sleep in easier. But, guys, anyways, I love you. Thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you on the next one. As always, down in the links below is going to be, uh, if you want to come over here and work for United Road, go ahead, hit that link. That is the very top one. My name is directly underneath it if you want to join. Um, if I'm the reason you came over, please use me as your uh, referral. Also, on top of that, um, I do have a video. You guys saw those Jeeps being loaded. I'm just finishing up the, uh, the training video for that. That is a membership portion underneath the uh, – or that, that is going to be a membership-only video simply because they're longer videos and no one really watches them um, on here. It's, it's not something that's going to – keep most people's attention the viewership is way down for those videos so it is under a membership thing it's as cheap as i can make it uh it's five dollars a month if you guys want to go watch those join it for one month watch them and uh go ahead and oh my wife and kids just showed up go ahead and uh <laughs> she's yelling at me go ahead and join that and uh, also down below is going to be the Get Upside app if you want money back on your fuel and the credit card app that I always use to get money back so we can get the points and take our family on vacation. But until then, guys, I will see you on the next one. Bye.